Let's talk about how to make money from open source. I'm going to give you so many different ways that you can do this. Open source has so many benefits. It will allow you to accelerate your learnings from coding to communication to collaboration, grow your network and allow you to get the job and clients and money that you deserve. But there are so many ways that you can actually make money from open source. So let's discuss this in this video. And if that sounds interesting to you, then subscribe to my YouTube channel below, give this video a thumbs up and hit the bell button so you get notified every time I post a video and go live. Let's start off with the simplest one, donations. There are GitHub sponsors, Patreon and the Open Collective. And there are probably some other ones as well, but these are the most popular. And it allows individuals and businesses to support open source contributors and projects by donating monthly or as a one off. This helps the maintainer, the contributor to contribute more. It allows them to feel that their work isn't going unnoticed and it gives them that motivation to do more. So it's a great thing to do. Even if it's $1 a month to, I don't know, $100 a month, it all helps and really encourages the maintainer. So I highly recommend it. I always say if you've got $10 a month that you can donate, probably give it to 10 different people. Therefore, it allows you to support and motivate 10 different people rather than one person just getting $10. And there are many ways you can ask for donations and depending on the popularity of your project and your socials, you'll get different results. So this is highly variable. GitHub Sponsors has been around since 2019 and it's the newest kid on the block. It's a great way for GitHub organizations, for communities, for individuals to receive funding directly from GitHub and directly from their GitHub profiles. The huge benefit of using GitHub sponsors is it's all directly on the GitHub platform, but also GitHub takes zero fees. So the person you're donating to gets 100% of what you're donating, which I think is pretty awesome. Patreon, on the other hand, charge between 5 and 12% and also charge a processing fee. But Patreon lets you build a community around your work. And supporters, just like on GitHub sponsors, can make monthly donations or one-off. And then on Patreon, you can actually create exclusive content to those who are interested in paying for it. But be careful creating exclusive and extra content for your sponsors, where you might start off with only one or two sponsors on Patreon, is a lot of extra work. So you really need to be committed. You're definitely in it for the marathon rather than the sprint, because you're gonna to wanna to create an extra content to encourage more people to pay for it. Which is why I'm a huge fan of GitHub sponsors, because they're sponsoring what you're doing already, rather than getting you to create create extra content. The downside to donations is that it's really hard to build and it's unpredictable. So to build a sustainable income from that is kind of debatable, but it's a great thing to have on the side as an extra. Another way to make money from open source is if you've got an open source product, have a hosted version of your open source product. And it allows people to run the software on their own servers for free, but you'll charge for the hosted version. You can even bundle this with other features like support and training. The downside is that your margins are never gonna be that big. If you charge too much, users will definitely host it themselves rather than having the convenience of you hosting it for you. So this is definitely a numbers game. And by numbers, I mean, you want lots of people to sign up because you're making small margins. And that does work and I've seen that work a lot. There's also paid support. Providing extra services is a good way to generate income from open source projects. These services could be technical support, certifications, and training. It's an effective way to earn some money as an open source maintainer and keep the project going. Take a look at Red Hat. Its business model is all about providing free solutions and generating profits from only additional services. And they got bought for billions of dollars, so they must be doing something right. When companies look at troubleshooting open source software, it's usually better for them to sign up people who made the software than trying to learn the ins and outs of the product themselves. Not only are companies saving on payroll as they don't need to hire in-house specialists, they also have a peace of mind knowing that they have a pro on hand when a problem arises. So what would the support look like? Well, here are a few examples. Help in basic installation or usage or setup, coding and bug fixing, adding new features, written documentation, tutorials, and examples. The next one I wanna talk about is the open core model. The idea behind this is that 
You open source the majority of your code, but you keep a small fraction of it licensed as proprietary code. Tailwind UI is a good example of this. It is free and open source to use. Both the framework and features are all free. However, users can support the project and save some time by purchasing extra features, such as the pre-made UI components. I really like this because people can get to use the benefit of the project, but for some extra work of the maintainers, it saves other people time having pre-made components and it allows them to support and fund the project. Some open core projects set themselves up by charging only for those features that larger customers tend to need, such as user management or specialist integration. These projects are therefore pitching their paid extras to enterprise users, whilst individuals and small companies that do not need these extra features can continue to use the project for free. And they, of course, they can also donate, as we mentioned right at the beginning as well, which hopefully they do, and we're going to encourage more companies to donate. A lot of times I do see individuals donating to projects and other maintainers, and it'd be great to see other companies do that. Actually, Dev Daily sponsor us, and it's great to see the first company that was sponsoring us on GitHub Sponsors. So thank you so much, Dev Daily. One thing you need to consider with this is that it can be challenging to separate proprietary features from the existing code bases or into packages or modules. So you need to think about this from the beginning. An open source project does require excellent architecture to set up the open core module. Another option is dual licensing. This is where an independent developer uses a software for free, but companies using it for profit must pay a license fee. Dual licensing allows companies to release commercial software with a commercial license that's derived from the free open source, commonly distributed under the GNU uh, General Public License, GPL. An example of this is MySQL. They release, for example, MySQL Enterprise under the commercial license while still offering two other products like MySQL Community Edition under the GPL license. Another option is software as a service, the open SaaS model. The, the SaaS model is a popular way to license software because it's flexible and offers rapid deployment and decreases cost. What makes SaaS attractive is that the software is stored in the cloud, users only need a web browser to access an application. With an open SaaS model, software is purchased via subscription, which can offer varying levels of service. For example, you might want to offer technical support, software customization, training, and package options. WordPress is a good example example of this is an open platform and it offers subscription plans for extra features like unlimited storage and automatic backups. The downside to this model is that building and maintaining multiple products is a lot of work. Another alternative is paid feature request. This is when software is distributed for free, but additional features, functionality and even updates come at a charge. If you find a couple of companies using your project, you can offer a paid feature request, meaning you can develop new features based on the company's requests and needs. In return, they'll pay you to develop these features. This one is more of a straightforward model to make money from open source. Often it is more cost effective for companies to hire you as a freelancer to develop the new functionality they need than having their developers spend time figuring out the code base and adding new functionality. Another option is bug hunt, also known as bug bounty programs, is a way to earn money by reporting errors on other systems or by solving them and submitting your pull requests with a code that fixes them. There are very big companies who submit their products for this type of treatment. And in fact, when I interviewed the founder of Curl Project, Daniel Stumberg, he mentioned that this is a way to contribute to the curl project while getting compensated for this. Read and watch my interview with Daniel here. Also a link in the description below. I hope you enjoyed this video on how you can make money from open source. There are new ways appearing all the time, which is why I find it super interesting. Open source is evolving and growing because of you. And things will change every month, every year. I see different ways different smarter ways to do it. You don't need to get into the scammy ways to do it. There are the official ways where people and companies will pay for it. Let me know in the comments below which are your favorite ways to make money from open source. And if you have any other ideas of, of ways to make money from open source, let me know in the comments below. I love geeking out and learning with you. Talking about geeking out and learning together, we have a Discord community, link in the description below. Let's chat in Discord between live streams and videos. I'll see you there.